Thank you. I actually want to say, this is actually one of the most fun, bouncy things I've ever been on. Okay, so once upon a time, it used to be really awkward when you called a taxi and you had luggage. Because if you had to run out to get something, you're like, do I bring my bag? Do I not bring my bag? Because I don't want him to think that I'm kind of jump, jumping my like fare, but I don't want him to run off with my, my bags as well. But then came Uber and Lyft, and you're like, oh, okay, this is all good. I know him or the, you know her, and they know who I am. We have this, you know, we have this tracking device, so you feel okay about leaving your bag. Um, so that's what I did when I went to. I was on my way to the airport, and I had to pick up my charger uh, from a friend's place where he was having tantric sex. So he just left a charger on in front of his apartment door. So I ran up and I was like, okay, what could happen by leaving my bag? Well, I came down, and um, my driver. My Lyft driver was there, but the car was not, which is very strange. And he said, they stole my car. So you've been carjacked at gunpoint. And I was like, oh my God. So we called the police and they show up literally within a minute. And it was really impressive because they're like, oh, you know, this happens like once a day in DC. And I was like, okay. So luckily it's a lift, right? So you're tracking it. And so we, I like opened up my phone. I was like, okay, we found the, you know, we found it. And the thing is, it was in an alleyway, not moving. So the cops were like, ah, they probably just kind of threw it away <laughs> out the window. So I was like, OK. Um, so this is me and my Lyft driver waiting in the police car. His name is Yahaya. He's a Ghanaian immigrant with three kids, ages 23, 19, and three. So I was like, oops, <laughs> that little kind of thing at the end. So he used my phone <laughs> to call his wife, or actually text his wife, his wife was like, what the fuck? Um, so the detectives came and you know asked us to describe the kids, and we were like, oh, we can't because they had like you know sort of masks on them, and it's interesting. So carjackings are up across the country. In Philadelphia alone, they're going to be five x what they were in 2019, and so it's kind of interesting because carjackings used to be kind of crimes with money, like you took BMWs and um, and Mercedes and you stripped them for money. That is now not the case. It's mostly youth. They are basically 15, 14, there's been a 12-year-old charge, there's even an 11-year-old charge, and they are bored because they were locked up in COVID, and so there are no extracurriculars and no sports, so this becomes a form of entertainment, and it's not just teen boys, it's actually girls. In this crime, 73-year-old woman dragged to death and dismembered in her car, and four of the four kids, three of them were girls. So we are systematically failing our youth, and I think this is a symptom of broader societal ills. I was a little bit more lucky. They, within an hour, they kind of found the car because um, it's a red car, and you know another patrol car kind of saw um, saw the car driving, and then gave chase. And the kids basically knew the cops were onto them, and they abandoned the car, and so they left it in Logan Circle. So we went and you know kind of drove. Um, another cop had seen a red abandoned car in the middle of the street and sort of summoned us. And so I didn't know if my bag and my passport and my laptop were still in the car. So it was sort of like, is it there? Is it not? It's sort of like Stroganger's cat, but with a backpack. And I'm glad, I'm glad this crowd got that. And so they fingerprinted everything. <clears throat> and indeed, my bag was still there with my laptop, with my laptop, uh, and my passport. They had ransacked everything. They'd taken soup and spilled it over. And I was like, after that experience, I was like, fund the police. I was basically like, this is pretty impressive on the part of the police. He has his car back. He cleaned everything. His wife was like really relieved, because that is a very strange text to get um, from your husband. And also, during that entire time, I just want to say, my Lyft ride was still going, so. <laughs> So Lyft checks in, are you okay? You've been stopped a long time, do you need help? I was like, kinda, yeah. And then on top of that, I just left a Lyft ride going because I, I didn't cancel it. After we got it all back, it was still running on my phone. So I was kind of curious, um, I, they, I wasn't charged. So then, so five weeks later after that, I uh, fractured 12 of 24 of my vertebrae snowboarding <laughs> and I was helicoptered from Sun Valley to uh, Boise. I left about 40% of my face actually on the on the mountain. So obviously everything's a little bit better. I have, <laughs> it makes me sound like a much more exciting uh, snowboarder than I am because I'm a girl who does extreme sports in very not extreme ways. Like if I'm bouldering, I'm like the V0, V1. But um, I now have titanium in my bones like Wolverine, but a little bit more dumpling shaped. So <laughs> 
you can witness my transformation into a bionic dumpling, and I am God willing, hoping that 2023 is a much more chill year for me, okay? Hey there, thanks for watching, I'm Brady. And I'm Firein, and we are the people behind Ignite Talks HQ. The speaker just watched was in a race against time. Every Ignite Talk is 20 slides, and the slides change every 15 seconds, whether you're ready or not, so you gotta keep up. It's out of control. Could you do this? <laughs> we think so. Follow us in the usual places to learn more about how you can give a talk. And don't forget to subscribe for more speedy talks. <laughs>